Hey guys, let's talk about RAM management. And ironically, when I say RAM management, I'm actually talking about you management for your RAM. I'll tell you what I mean by that during this video. If you keep sheep, if you know anything about sheep, you know that ewes spend so much of their time and energy producing lambs and mothering those lambs. And <clears throat> the fact of life is that that's their job and it's the ram's job to uh, make sure that, that they have lambs. But here's a fact of life. Lambs are made during the mating season, not during lambing season. What I mean by that is your success and your yield of how productive your ewes are going to be is greater influenced by how you treat them in the weeks preceding and following putting a ram in with them than it is by, you know, during lambing season itself. So I'm going to talk about exactly all the tips that you need to make sure that your flock, your ewes especially, are getting best prepared for when a ram comes to visit. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I love the new faces here at the High Mountain Homestead. We are all about better soil, better plants, and better animals. If any of that is up your alley, consider subscribing. But today, we're talking specifically <laughs> ram management, how to prepare your ewes for your ram's visit. Let's get to it. Okay, so I am just on the fence line right now because we just got this ram two days ago. He's a, <laughs> he's a rental. You can tell right yeah, this dude in the back right here, um, he's only eight months, but uh, he has bred four ewes before, so he's not a first-timer. <laughs> Championship bloodline, uh, so I'm very excited to, to have him. Some of my ewes have uh, <laughs> championship bloodline as well, so I'm very excited to have kind of best of both worlds here uh, with this. But I'm going to undo the gate. Actually, I'm going to put the camera down pick up a stick because rule number one of ram management um, don't trust the ram and I try not to go into the paddock without a stick with me so I'm gonna put the camera down and get my stick I haven't had to clock this one yet I used to own a ram that I made the mistake of treating him like my buddy my pal my amigo <laughs> And, uh, and he's not here anymore because he, he became quite rude to me um, and the use for that matter too. So um, I try to make sure he knows I'm the alpha with the stick. I haven't had to hit him yet, but again, I like to, I like to hold the stick. I feel like I need to clarify that. Um, if you keep sheep, you know what I'm talking about. You just don't want to be caught off guard with a ram, but I don't just actively go out and like hit the sheep, like not by a long shot. I've only had to do it. Can you tell my neighbors are feeding their dogs? <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, it's not it's not an animal abuse thing. It's just to make sure if he comes at you, you can clock him in the head. But he's a little cupcake. Look at this guy. He's pretty good right now. So back to the whole point. Sorry about that tangent. That's my jam. I go on tangents here. Um, but what I want to talk about today is how to prepare your ewes for a ram. And it actually takes place a long time before your ram actually comes. And when I say a long time, I mean like a month. So relatively long time, I guess. All right, they're a little bit quieter now. We gave them a little flake of hay. Okay, so like I was saying, your prep for your ram actually starts about 30 days in advance. And we're actually doing it right now. So, supplement their feed, especially high protein sources. So for me, what that means is alfalfa. And I am really lucky because um, I live in Utah, which is naturally higher elevation, but I can travel within an hour and a half distance to some very high elevation and get some very high quality uh, alfalfa. The higher the elevation, typically the higher protein levels it has. So sometimes 50% more protein in the alfalfa so very awesome for these ewes why is protein so important protein is so important because it just helps the ewes uh, 
put on some weight. It helps them give them some extra strength. It helps feed their um, their internal organs to make sure that, especially their reproductive organs, to make sure that they're doing their part right now. So I don't actually like supplementing my sheep unless I absolutely have to. You look you look behind me and you see my truly pathetic pasture right now. It's because it's the end of November and the leaves have fallen. Um, the grass is almost all eaten. I don't have good grass to begin with. However, um, whatever, we're working on that. The point is, um, even with this much, I would probably still let them uh, eat some of these leaves, eat some of the taller parts of the grass. I still see parts of the grass that are four to six inches tall. They definitely have food back here. They're just being picky about it. But even though it spoils them and it makes them complain every time they see me now that I'm regularly feeding them. Are you kidding me? Get out of the bucket. I bet your feet are gross. She doesn't listen to me. She's the oldest daughter. You dads out there know how that goes. Um, so supplementing them to make sure that they're, they're putting on weight is going to be very important. So you're actually going to want to make sure that they have plenty of feed 30 days before and up to 30 days after. And so because you don't actually know when the ram is going to do his thing, um, you know, I put them in two days ago. I doubt, um, I doubt they're all covered. I doubt any of them are covered, actually. Uh, but the point is, is you don't know when it's going to happen. So I'll give it about six weeks. So it's basically six weeks with a month on either side of that. So it could be as long as three and a half months of, of food, which is great when you can when you combine that task with um, the fact that it's winter right now and I don't have a lot of forage anyway, that's fine, right? Um, the reason is because uh, I explained why it's good to do it beforehand, but after the fact, that you, uh, during the next 30 days after she's covered, she's gonna get pretty lethargic. The reason why a you is so lethargic uh, for 30 days after she has been bred is because the egg is still actually not attached to the uterus. So don't move her excessively. Don't trim toenails. Don't be rough with her. Don't do anything dumb like that. The reason is because the egg's not attached to the uterus yet. Um, so you're going to want to make sure she takes it easy. And it's, it's great for her to take it easy when she's got plenty of high protein uh, food to eat you know she's going to be sustained for that time uh, and uh, so make sure that, that she's good also if it's the winter time if it's any time but especially in the winter which it usually is uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got plenty of clean non-frozen water uh, yous will drink more during this time and a lot of people know that yous drink yous and rams sheep in general drink less during the winter however when they are pregnant or expecting or trying to ovulate, um, they're gonna drink a little bit more. So make sure it's clean. Do your best to get a de-icer. I have a de-icer, I've just been too lazy to do it. So I just come out in the morning with a uh, five gallon bucket full of hot water from the sink. I I guess I'm not late, I don't know. Cause that's not lazy to do. I should just, I should get the de-icer. I'm being dumb. Just get the de-icer out, PJ. Okay. Um, give them minerals, right? So um, I regularly give minerals about once a I find that with free choice, they don't go to it as often, but if I kind of withhold it and give it back every month, um, they take it. So for my minerals, I've got, um, you know, make sure it's enhanced with selenium. That is like the miracle mineral for sheep, especially use, um, go for it, put that out, get it to them any way you can. Okay, I'm kind of jumping around in the cycle here, but after 30 days, when the egg is finally attached to the uterus, um, you're good to start feeding them grass if you have grass. I do not, I just have the alfalfa. So these gals will get spoiled with alfalfa all season long um, and whatever they can pick off out here. But uh, you can go down to grass. They're, they'll be fine with less nutrient for a while. Okay, here's the fun part where I ask you guys to take bets with me on what you what you think we're gonna have. So I have four U's here. I have two first-time moms, two second-time moms. My two second-time moms, 
Um, one of them twinned her first time and one of them singled her first time. The one that twinned is a triplet and the one that singled is a twin. I feel like I'm, that's hard to follow. But we're on YouTube so you can just rewind it and watch it again. Um, and then my two U's that are first time moms this year or will be first time moms, they were both singles. So we will see what happens there. Um, so I am betting that we have six lambs. Um, we're we're going to lamb uh, between April 15th and May 15th is my best guess when that's going to go down. Um, so I'm going to bet six lambs. However, my two first-time moms are uh, later used. So they're both like almost nine months old right now, which is a little bit older for a first-time you. So I wouldn't be surprised if I get... Um, if I get a twin out of one of them. So six is what I'm what I'm telling myself and telling you guys, but what I'm telling my heart and what I really want is eight. And here's how I think that's possible. So this tall gal right here, we call her Winnie. Um, she was a triplet. Her mom is famous for tripleting every year. She gave twins her first time. I would not be surprised if she triplets her first time. And then Diana, who's the one with partial coat right now, um, I think she'll twin this year. She is a twin, and then this is her second year. Her daughter, who we just officially named Hermione, um, her daughter will, I think, um, I think she'll single, and I kind of hope she'll single because she was a pain to deliver. But this ram right here uh, has a much narrower head, so I hope that helps during lambing season. And then Tula, who I think is this girl right here on the closest side to the fence. Um, I bet she'll double. I wouldn't be surprised if she double. And she was my easiest lamb I've ever seen or heard of being delivered. So take bets with me. What do you think? Um, I'm, I guess I'm kind of cheating because I'm saying six and I'm saying eight. So I guess I should make a definitive thing. I'll, I'll shoot high. Let's say eight. Let's say eight lambs. I think that would be really, really cool. That would be a 200% uh, lambing rate with a combination of half first time, half second time use. So comment below. Let me know what you think. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. I hope I'm seeing you again. Thanks for watching this video.